Hello and welcome to Cornerstone Church Online. I'm Matt and we're so excited that you're joining us today. If you're a first time guest, please take a moment to click the Cornerstone Connect link down below in the description and fill it out so that we can send you a gift just to say thank you from our Cornerstone family. Up next is our five minute countdown. So just say hi to someone and comment, where are you gonna go once quarantine is over? Me, I'm gonna go play some golf. Enjoy the countdown.
Welcome back. We are about to enter into a great time of worship, followed by Pastor Brian and Miss Lisa, as we continue our series on the Book of Esther, Desperate Measures. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not
Continuous praise. That's what we want to just continually give the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that our chains are gone and we've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour 
I first believe my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love Amazing grace The Lord has promised good to me His word my hope secure He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures, my chains are gold, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Amazing grace The earth shall soon dissolve like snow The sun forbear to shine But God who's brought us here this far soon be ever mine you are you are forever mine you are forever mine my chains are gone my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love oh my chains are gone sing it now my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a blood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace unending love amazing grace your unending love Amazing grace. Thank you. Today is Mission Sunday, and right now during this difficult time, our missionaries are really in need of our prayers and our support. If you want to support missions, please go to our website, wearecornerstone.com, or please send it in to our church offices on Tuesdays from 9 to 11, or Thursdays from 5.30 to 7. Please continue to pray for our missionaries. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Cornerstone Rowlett. My name is Megan Wilson, and we are so glad that you get to join us here today. Up next is a few announcements. Every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we are having an online Bible study via Zoom meeting. We hope to see you there. There are a few ways in which you can give. First at wearecornerstone.com. Click on the Give Generously tab and then follow the prompts. Second, text to give. Text the amount you want to give to 972-362-5323. Third, mail it in to 8200 Schrady Road, Rowlett, Texas 75088. Lastly, download the Easy Tithe app and search Cornerstone Church. Thank you for your continued support. If you'd like to stay up to date with Cornerstone, like our Facebook page, Cornerstone Church Rowlett, 
Follow our Instagram, Cornerstone Roulette, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are Cornerstone. Thank you again for joining Cornerstone Online. Up next, Pastor Brian and Lisa will be continuing their sermon series on the book of Esther, Desperate Measures. And remember, we are Cornerstone. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cornerstone Online. My name is Brian. And I'm Lisa, and it is a pleasure to have you join us today in this great day of serving the Lord. We're going to continue our series today on uh, Esther, God remembers. remembers. And so I know sometimes I have trouble remembering. Well, I do nowadays, <laughs> especially anybody? what day of the week it I is. Know. So uh, anybody else ha may have that problem you're watching, but listen, God does not have that problem. And he remembers and he knows exactly where you're at today. And before we get started, I want to say, do say this. I want to say, give a huge shout out to our tech team, to our worship team, to our facilities teams that make all this uh, work together. They're awesome. And they have been such a blessing to us. Yes. All uh, that behind the scene work that, that yeah. makes this happen on Sunday mornings. They're phenomenal people and we love and appreciate each one of them. Each one of them. So if you know who they are, give them a shout out and thank yes. them this week week. So anyway, so today we're going to pick up on Esther chapter four. And what a great and phenomenal chapter Absolutely. Um, of Esther, where we're continuing our series on God remembers. Let's do a little bit of a recap. The decree had been made by the king and dispatched to all 127 provinces that in approximately one year, every Jew will be killed. And in the, in the Bible, it says they would be annihilated, which uh -huh. is a, a very strong word. Uh -huh. So the laws of the Medes and Persians <laughs> could not be reversed once it was written into the law by the king. And the whole law was created by a hatred that Haman had yes. because Mordecai would not bow to <laughs> Haman. So let me ask you a question. Um, what is your response to a horrific and earth shattering news? You see, Mordecai, he responded in such a way that mm -hmm. prompted uh, a time for the Jews to come together and really seek God. So how do you and I respond to news that no one ever wants to hear? Right. It's mm -hmm. cancer. Yeah. There's a car accident. You've been given four to six weeks to live. A family member or a close friend has died. Yep. There's been an affair. Life-threatening addictions. Prison sentence. These are, this is earth-shattering news that they right. have received. You see, you can fill in the blank. So how do we respond in desperate situations? Yes, and that's the title of our message today is Desperate Measures. What does desperation have to do with us as how we respond to the whatever situation, like Lisa said, fill in the blank. And so we're going to read just a few verses in Esther today, but I want you to think about how you respond to uh, things that happen in your life that are out of your control, that just happen, show up, that phone call late at night, that text, that that news flash that's, oh, yeah. that's come. So how do you respond when things uh, just break loose. And so today we're going to minister to you on desperate measures, what you and I should do. And we, we're just mirroring what uh, Mordecai and Esther do. Right. And so it's a great message today. Here's Esther chapter four says this, when Mordecai learned about all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on burlap and ashes and went into the city and cried and wailed with a loud voice. He went as far as the gate of the palace for no one was allowed to enter the palace gate while wearing clothes of mourning. And the news of the king's decree reached all of the provinces, and there was great mourning among all the Jews. They fasted, they wept, and they wailed, and many people lay in burlap, uh, in ashes. And so the, the first thing we want to, I want to talk to you about is what Mordecai did and what we need to do is, first of all, you've got to acknowledge there's a problem. Because what a lot of people do, and Mordecai didn't do this, but what a lot of people do, maybe what you do is when, when something hits, when something hits hard, you stick your head in the sand like an ostrich. You just, well, it'll go away. 
and uh, things like this do not go away. And so the first thing that Mordecai did is he acknowledged there was a problem. Uh, he doesn't mince actions or words at all. He, he immediately knows what to do. He acknowledges there's a serious problem and that he needs to take mm-hmm. serious action on the part of his people. And so he, he tears his clothes. He, he uh, uh, puts on sackcloth and takes dust and pours it all over him and, and starts to wail and cry and goes into the city. He didn't stay by himself. He didn't isolate himself. He went in the city and began to cry out with a loud voice. Can you picture him uh, just in, in sackcloth and mourning? And this is consistent <clears throat> with other pictures in the Old Testament where bad news has come. Uh, where, where national disasters has happened, kind of like what we're in, uh, right now. And so when larger than life problems or bad news, uh, was presented, people in the Old Testament would often do this. Uh, it was a sign of, of mourning or repentance or, uh, a heartfelt action that, uh, they wanted to change, uh, facilitate change in this problem that has happened. And so this sackcloth, now most of the ashes was dirt. But the sackcloth was made of, normally made of black goat's hair. And it was uncomfortable and itchy. I could only imagine. Mm. And so it made them uncomfortable, reflecting the uncomfortableness of the situation. And so I know many times we read over that and think, well, you know, that's just a change of clothes and, and it doesn't matter. It was a huge sign, uh, to, for, for Mordecai to do this. And so, uh, remember the first thing is he did not ignore it. He acknowledged there was a problem. He didn't stick his head in the sand. He didn't go about his way and, and act like nothing was wrong. And sometimes we like to do that. We like to ignore the problem. It'll just go away, but it's not going to go to go away. So what should we do? Well, we need to reflect what Mordecai did. First of all, we need to acknowledge that the issue is yes. real. Mm-hmm. The doctor's report is real. The news uh, is real. The report is real. That's come to us uh, in whatever form. And so our response uh, in a New Testament setting is this. And there's three things I want to share with you about how you and I need to respond today uh, as New Testament, as believers in Jesus Christ. And the first thing that we do now, this is not alluded to in Mordecai. Remember, this is our response. We have no mention of him praying right. in the chapter. Now, some people uh, say it may indicate he was, but, but in the scripture, there's none of this. But we do. We must be a people of prayer mm-hmm. when, when bad things or desperate uh, things happen in our lives. And so we need to be desperate in prayer, desperate in fasting, mm-hmm. and desperate in our worship. And so the first thing is prayer in Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. And if you're a new Christian, you need to read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Yes. It's a roadmap for life. Uh, different situations and issues that arise in your life. And one of these Jesus teaches on is fasting. Mm-hmm. And Matthew 7, 7, I'm sorry, prayer is that uh, he says, keep seeking, asking, and knocking. Mm-hmm. And so prayer is huge on, in the Sermon on the Mount. We have the Lord's Prayer there. And yeah. we try to pray that when we're together at the end of our services together. And so he says, if you'll ask, you'll receive. If you'll seek, you'll find. Mm-hmm. If you knock, the door will be open. Those are three different acts of preparation, uh, of desperation to, to f- have an answer to the situation that you're facing. Some people ask me, Pastor, I prayed for it one time. Should I pray again? Well, oh, this yes. is your answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ask, seek, and knock. Go after God uh, in mm-hmm. your prayer life. And so prayer is, is, is that thing that moves the hand of God. It lays the rails down so the locomotive can get to mm-hmm. the problem that's before you. And so the next thing is not only prayer, but the next thing that we need to do as New Testament Christians is goes against our culture. Oh yeah. Uh, so much because especially right now, uh, cause we're all locked at home and we eat everything in sight. But the second thing we need to do is fast. Mm-hmm. Fast. And so Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount talked about this as well. He talked about when you fast, he said, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't be like the religious leaders. Go around sad and, and look pitiful and let everybody know, oh, I'm fasting and I'm miserable. Well, that's it. You've accomplished all that you're going to accomplish. But Jesus said, go wash your face, act like it's just a normal day and go into your closet where God sees in secret and pray. And the God who sees in secret will reward you openly. And this has to do with prayer and with fasting because they go together, as we mentioned. And so when you, when you pray and when you fast, 
Listen, when desperate measures hit, this is what you need mm -hmm. to do. Yes. Go after God in prayer, fasting, not to lose weight, even though that may happen, but sacrificing what you normally do to mm -hmm. spend time seeking God for that desperate answer that you desire so much. And the last one is worship. Now, Jesus, remember, he met this wonderful lady uh, at the well and in John chapter four, and they talked about, uh, he introduced her what living water was yes. and he, he, he was questioning her back and forth. She was a, a Samaritan woman. She, no one, she had a terrible past, but Jesus engaged her anyway. And so he talked to her or he asked her about worship and he responded to her in this in John four twenty three and 24. He said, but the time's coming. Indeed, it's here right now that true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And so the Father is looking for those who worship him in that way. And so <clears throat> uh, we must worship him in spirit and truth. And so what worship does during a desperate time is this. It shows your maturity during a difficult season. If you worship God and begin to thank him, God, I thank you for the answer that's going to come. Mm -hmm. I thank you for this, this, this situation, uh, that I'm able to offer you thanks in the middle of. Now, I don't thank God for the bad thing. I thank God for being with me yes. in the bad thing. And so it reflects your depth of relationship with Christ when you learn to pray, when you learn to fast, and when you learn to worship during a difficult season, instead of moving into complaining, bitterness, fault finding, uh, that, that will reveal something in you that you'll want to improve. That's shallowness. But we need, if that's you, you need to deepen your relationship yes. with the Lord through these three areas as we move. And the second thing that, uh, we need to talk to you about, first of all, uh, Mordecai, uh, had an immediate response. He didn't ignore it. And the second thing is that he did it. He included others in it. Mm -hmm. So all the Jews began to do this together. All of them began to, to, to respond as he did. And so we just want to tell you that as he went in the city and declared and, and this news traveled around, you are not meant to do this alone. That's right. You need to include others in your life of like faith. Now, this is very important. Don't get people, uh, praying and fasting and worshiping with you who don't know God. God. Right. You need people who know how to access the power of God. You know, you need to have people that know how to pray. You need to have people that know how to worship and gather around you, just not anyone. And so verse three says that the king's decree went out all everywhere and they all responded in this. And we were meant to do this together. Uh, we talked about this at the first of the year in our cornerstone mm -hmm. that uh, we mentioned an old African proverb that said this uh, alone. You can go fast, but together. You, we can go far. Yeah. And so, uh, you need to, need to understand this, that we can do this together. We're going to pray and fast and worship together, uh, and help you during these desperate times that people may be in and you're in. And so, uh, find those who are like you. Matthew eighteen nineteen says this, I tell you this, if two of you agree on earth concerning any one thing and you ask my father who's in heaven, he will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am among them. And so when you get together with people and you pray and you believe God and you're fasting and you're doing what you need to do to get an answer, Jesus shows up. He does. Amen. What's great is you all are together, but what's most important is that Jesus shows up. Now, I'm going to close with this, and Lisa's going to take over the last thing about Esther, but a snowflake by itself can't do much. Right. But when you get a bunch of snowflakes together, as my friends in Minnesota know, it can shut down the whole mm -hmm. state, the, the city, everything. And so it's very important. And down here, we, we know about rains. Well, during the spring we do, <laughs> but that's about it. One raindrop can't do hardly anything. But when you put a bunch of them together, it will change the landscape. Listen to me. Listen to this preacher today. Get together with people who believe God. You can change the landscape of your life no matter what desperate situation you're facing. Yes. And I'm reminded as Brian was uh, talking that my dad always said it's the banana that is broken off that gets eaten. Yeah, first from and, the bunch. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you it, it, it pays to be together with other people. Amen. And we'll find out that, you know, Esther, she believed the same thing. And I'm reminded of the quote, desperate times call for desperate measures. Absolutely. Esther, we have Esther, our beautiful, ordinary girl who is now a beautiful queen. And she's told of Mordecai's um, actions at the gate. He's wearing the, the sackcloth yeah. and the ashes. So guess what she does? 
<laughs> she sends yeah. clothes to Mordecai because she didn't really know what was going on. And I'm reminded, how many times do women, we go shopping oh. when in a desperate time because, you know, clothes are going to solve the issue. <laughs> yeah. But then again, Sh what shopping do, therapy, right? Shopping therapy. What do men do? Uh, we uh, buy power tools and go to Home Depot. There you go. So, you know. <laughs> that's, that's our answer. Or a ball game or, or something. Or a new grill. A new grill. That's yes, what I'm talking a new about. Grill. So I can have a new grill. Yeah, because it's this one. No. <laughs> no, we got three already. Oh, so man. Esther 4, verses 4 through 9 reads that Mordecai refused the clothes and sent back a copy of the decree that had been issued for the Jews' destruction. Mm. You see, imagine Esther. She's alone in the palace. Right. She and her people will be killed if something isn't done. Mm. I imagine there was a moment of fear. Sure. Of worry, of anxiety. In fact, she responds by sending a message back to Mordecai and says, all the king's people know if a woman or a man goes into the inner court without permission, they'll be killed unless the king mm. holds out the golden scepter. You see, Esther was going to break the law of the land by voluntarily interrupting the king. That's a that just sounds tense. It does. I mean, it I can does. imagine she's yeah. a little scared sure. of this, not, you know, wondering what's going on. <clears throat> and Mordecai, of course, his reply back to Esther in verse 14 says, For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Ah, wow. Whoa. And who mm. knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. You see, I can imagine something rising up in Esther. And she said, you know what? Mordecai mm. believes that I can do this. Sure. I am going to go before the king. If I'm accepted, then yes. Mm -hmm. But if not, right. so be it. But God. But God. But I you. love that phrase. But God. Sure. So Esther sent back in verse 16 a message to Mordecai that she wanted the Jews, all of the Jews in the land, to join her in fasting for three days. Right. You see, she had that, she knew that practice of together. Right. It didn't, it was not just Esther by herself. She pulled people of like faith with her to begin to fast over this desperate measure. And there was people that in her in her place yes. that weren't, weren't even Jewish. Right. And she was going to have them fast for with fast her, her maidens. Yeah. Yes. yes. So Esther was in a desperate situation. She needed an answer from God immediately, but she chose to wait on God yes. and God's timing. Beautiful. You see, these three days are a powerful time for Esther to draw on the source of her strength, which is God. Right. A lot can happen in three days. <laughs> yes, it can. We just learned Remember that. this? John 20. Now on the first day of the week, yes. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb <laughs> early and saw that the stone had yes. been taken away from the Hallelujah. tomb. Three days. Yes. A lot can happen. happen. Jesus <laughs> was raised in three days. Amen. Waiting on God's timing is perfect. Yes, praise God. We are not born courageous. Hmm. I imagine our Esther growing up under Mordecai, her mentor, learned to have a courageous heart. And I believe that Mordecai was stretching Esther yes. with his challenge. Oh, yes. He knew that she could do it. He <laughs> believed in her. You see, there's times that God's going to stretch us. Sure. What are we going to do? Mm. How will you respond? How many times do we react? We jump ahead and we do something rash. We say things that we later regret. I know. I know. Esther could have gone right into the king and demanded that he reverse the decree for her sake, but it would have resulted in her death. Absolutely. But God. God. Yeah, his timing. His God time. can handle anyone. God can handle your kids. God can handle Amen. your spouse. He can handle that person at work who just gives you constant <laughs> grief. Sure. He can handle that person that made you all of the promises and broke most of them. Mm -hmm. God can handle the yes. most desperate situation. And most importantly, God can handle you, you. with all Amen. of your warts, your bruises, Jesus. your bumps, yeah. your yeah. attitudes, your, uh, you know, your thinking that you can fix this. Sure. God can handle you too. Absolutely. Remember, we have an invisible God working throughout Esther. Yes, yes. Esther determined that she was going to wait on God and allow God to guide her thoughts and give her the right words to say to the king. Amen. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord mm, shall renew, renew their, their strength. strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, during the waiting time, Esther learned three things, I believe, from this, using this verse. And I believe it's something that we can also learn to practice in those desperate times if we wait on the Lord. Because first of all, we'll gain new strength. Yes, we will. You see, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, our weakness, God is made made strong. strong. In our weakness... God is I made have strong. Lots of those. Yes, and so I, God we, has a lot of opportunities to be strong. Then. Yes, and He will if we wait mm-hmm. on Him. Second of all, our perspective will change. Mm. Romans eight twenty eight. I, like I like that. We know that God works all things according to good for yep. those that love Him. Yep. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. One of my favorite verses. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for health and not evil, to give you a hope and a future. Thank you, Jesus. Our perspective will change. How we look at that situation is going to change if we have spent time with God and Mm -hmm. waited on His timing. Thirdly, from Isaiah 40, 31, our determination to persevere will deepen. You You see, James 1, verse 2 through Mm -hmm. 4 says, The testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Sure. Romans 5, 3 and 4 says, Knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance yes. produces character, and character produces hope. Oh, amen. I want that hope. Sure. And it may mean that I may have to go through a desperate time to get that hope, but I am going to have that hope because I am going to wait on God, and I encourage you today to wait on God. Wait on His timing. Wait for His presence to come and just fill Praise you Lord. Yes. before you g- run into that desperate situation. It may seem like during the waiting time that nothing has happened. Mm. Maybe visibly nothing's happened, but remember in Esther, God's still working. working. When the enemy comes in and puts those (laughs) thoughts in your head, you got to kick him out. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to come in and rest in your mind. Get thee behind me, Satan. You can put your foot on his head and say, get out of here. You don't belong here because the God of the of heaven that the very creator of heaven and earth is here with yes. me and he is going to bring me through this and I will re- receive victory. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not for I, I am, am with, with you. you. Mm. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will, will help, help you. you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear Amen. not. I am yes. the, the one who helps you. The very I am is in your desperate situation. Yes, thank the you. The creator Father. of heaven, earth, and everything in it is in your situation. You see, during the waiting time, Esther became unafraid of what she faced. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time that you called, like Pastor Brian said, you call some friends of like faith. Sure. And they begin to fast and pray with you about your desperate situation Mm -hmm. that you're in. Maybe it's time for you to say, I am not going to rush into this unpredictable situation. Maybe it's time to say, I'm going to give it to God and listen for his directions. God not only will handle the situation, but God may say, surprise, Uh, I need to take care of you first. Sure. I need to work on you personally. So that I can gain new strength, so that my perspective can be changed, so Mm. that I will come through and receive victory. Praise God. Like Esther, because of her time with God, she comes to that moment of truth, Mm. that moment that she was destined from an early age. Right. She's going to step into the presence of the king, calm, wise, and confident. Praise the Lord. And I love that. Amen. Now, you may be sitting wherever you're at, and you're facing a desperate situation today. It could be your kids. It could be your marriage. It could be your health. It could be your finances. Anything that has really pinned you down. And the key about Esther is th- that I love is when she states, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to do whatever I can. Right. So there's always that, but if God doesn't do what I want him to do, I'm still going to serve him right. and still going to do what's right. I'm still going to worship him. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to uh, learn and be confident mm-hmm. in my God. See, that's where the real crux of the matter is. Because mm-hmm. sometimes God doesn't do what we want him to do because his plan 
is so much bigger yes. because we see this much, but God sees all of this. Mm -hmm. And so we have to trust him. So wherever you're at today, we want to take a moment and pray for you and believe God for you. So if, wherever you're at, if you would just, uh, I'm going to grab Lisa's hand and pray here in a moment, but I, I want you to put your hand on your chest and uh, I want you to pray with me and with Lisa and I, and we're going to join with you right now. We have like faith with you. Yes. And, and first of all, if you don't know Jesus as, as savior, you don't have any kind of faith. But today, if you'll accept him, you'll get a measure of faith put inside of you, the Bible says. The, grain, the, sea, the size of a mustard seed is very small, but it can do huge things. It can speak to mountains and they'll be removed. It just takes just a little bit to trust God and believe God for salvation. But if you need healing, if you're struggling, if you need direction and you're desperate, you I mean, it's like some, like when your parents, you ask them for something or, or somebody, and they say, no, you can't have it. And you just like you didn't even hear that. No, you just right. keep on. I, I, I got to have this. That's the attitude, the mentality that we want as we pray today. So, Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this, the scripture today that has spoken to us about not giving in to desperate situations, but God standing up. And uh, declaring that our God is able to do abundantly, uh, exceedingly abundantly above what we can even think or imagine. And so, Lord, today, I pray if there's those watching today who need you as Savior, who need you into their life, God, that they've been doing life without you. And these situations are getting worse and worse. But yet there's a God that wants to come in and save them and deliver them from eternal death. That's the biggest enemy, and Jesus has already defeated him. And so, Lord, I pray that they would accept you today as Savior and Lord. And then God, who's ever in their living room, has their hand on their heart, saying, God, there's a situation in my life today that I is desperate and I need help. And so, Lord, today I pray that you would move on their behalf. Lord, we pray that mountains would be cast in the sea. Lord, we pray that sickness would be healed. Lord, we pray that marriages would be restored. Lord, we pray that children would come home or children would be born again in the kingdom of heaven. Lord God, that finances, finances, God, and needs of that nature would be met according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we ask today that, that you would just unleash heaven's plan into their lives today. And we thank you today and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 We thank you for being with us today. Listen, if you accepted Jesus as your savior, oh, please yes. comment. Yes. Uh, on the, on the uh, side of there, you type it in and one of our hosts will get, connect with you mm -hmm. and we'll get you some resources to help you. And if it's your first time with us, Hey, thanks for being with us yes. today and uh, fill out the connection card. And uh, so we can send you a free gift. And next week, we, Mother's Day. Mother's so Day. So don't forget this week. Exactly. Bow yep. down to me. <laughs> um, don't forget this week is uh, you need to do something good for your mom. Do something yes. nice. Yes. Um, she's been cooped up in this house trying to t be a teacher. Sure. And you need to do something nice for her and let her know how much you appreciate and love her. Amen. And, of course, next week we will go before the king. Ooh, it's going to be good. It Mother's is. Day is going to be great. So be kind to your mom. Treat her nice. Do something great for her. And for all of our Cornerstone moms and those of you watching, maybe you're not here, you're awesome. Yes. You're going to make it. And you can persevere through whatever desperation it is and find God's hope for your life. You guys have a great week. Thank you for joining us today at Cornerstone Church Online. If you happen to give your heart to Christ today, leave yes in the comments so one of our hosts can connect with you. And if you're a first time guest, please take a moment to click the link in the description. It'll take you to our Cornerstone Connect page where you can fill it out so that we can send you a gift just to say thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great week, and remember, we are Cornerstone.